Buenos Dias Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Like a motherfucking pa -da -pa 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 -pa. Oh, you thought I wasn't? Pa -da -pa -pa -pa. Like a mother pa -da -pa -pa -pa. Like a motherfucking smack at it. Bye Bye -ya. That's the shit. Anyways, as you can tell by that thumbnail right there, yes indeedy, we're gonna talk about me. I know many of you tuned in, turned up. You're like, Sasuke, gun got hit in the head. Simone, I got hit in the head, man. I got hit in the head one time for my mind. Meant it never been the same since, right? Scrambled and jambled. But at the same time, in the meantime, in between time, I'm still here. Right? I'm still here. I'm still doing what I have to do in a menudo style in a direct fashion to bring the raza together, to unite the gente, um, to give a platform uh, uh, and a notion that it can be done um, positively in a positive ma a positively manner. Is that a word? Positively manner. In a positive manner if you make the effort, man, to embrace and, and show love um, to your brown people. Now, at the same time, or all people, at the same time, what I wanted to say was, I wanted to tell you guys a little story. You know, I wanted to tell you a little story. 1996, ooh wee, the game was ugly, right? Um, I had just got out of CYA in 1996, and I thought I had my shit together. I thought I was a gangster, man. I had a big old Mongolian whipping, one, one and a half feet long. Um, I thought I was the one, you know, I was getting out pushing that North narrative hardcore. So I was get all the homeboys need to unite because the opposition, so I was get they pose a threat to the safety and security of what we got going on. You know, so I was out there shooting directives when I wasn't even in a position to give directives. But that was um, the clutcher that I was given to get out there and to embrace all homeboys and basically to pull soldados, pull manpower. Um, you know, they say misery loves company. I wasn't a miserable motherfucker. I was just out there trying to get it and trying to build as much mount power as I can um, because I was on the north end note, meaning there was a lot of homeboys that were pushing the barrio. And yeah, me being from dead end, I was representing the barrio to the fullest. But at the same time, um, I was more into the cause. I was more into the north end. Now, you have to understand for the last six and a half years, I had just went through so much struggles um, at the benefits of of the North, you know, and for, for the North. Now, I wasn't being directed to do this, but this is something I did, something I took upon my plate of uh, being down South, as well as being up North. I chose to do. No one made me do shit. So quite contrary to what people think that people or another grown man will make you do something, Charlie, I chose to do what I was doing. So I knew what I signed up for and I knew exactly what it entailed. So I get out in 1996 and I remember upon my release, getting out and uh, get into my grandmother's house. I paroled to my grandmother's house. And I remember looking around. We pull up. She picks me up from the bus station. And uh, we pull up. And so I'm looking around, scratching my head like, where's my tío, where's my fucking uh, tío at, right? My tío Mark. At this time, she was like, mijo, he's in Corcoran. So he was in Corcoran prison. I was like, damn. Fuck, where's my primo Johnny at? Mijo, he's in Solano. What the fuck, right? So we were all incarcerated at the same time. Of course, I'm not in communication like that, so I didn't know. So I'm like, man, where's my cousin Ruben at? Oh, his fat ass is in the room, right, laying down. You know what I mean? So I walk in his room. Of course, there's jack-in-the-box bags everywhere. So I was getting an AC blowing at a fucking zero degrees, and he just fucking burps and farts at the same time. Looks at me and gives me a what's up, right? I do a pushing. He's the knack of the family. I ain't trying to do all that, right? Boo-boo face will be boo-boo face. Anyway, so I keep on pushing up out of there, and I told my abuelita, so what's, what's cracking? She goes, well, I have a fucking uh, a thing of beans. That's cracking. I said, orale, right? So that's gay party time. So I smacked my frijoles back with some tortillas, homemade, and um, I decided that for no other reason I should give my homeboy a call. Now, my, one of my best friends had just been released from California Youth Authority maybe about three months prior to me getting released. So, of course, I want to definitely get right into the mix, you know? Um, I know that my parole officer is going to be coming to see me. I was on juvenile parole. Of course, I had maxed out, but they still had to come see me that one time just to let me know and give me my discharge papers and do it, do it smo uh, smoking down the road. So I was, I was like, fuck that puto. I ain't tripping. You know what I mean? I'm off parole. I thought, hey, watch out. I maxed out. Grandma, she was like, what does that mean, mijo? It means watch your novellas, do your knitting. So I was like, go play bingo later on. And vamanos, I'm out of here. I'm going to go kick it with the norte, right? She's like, rifamos. It's all good. Anyway, so trip. My grandma was with the business. Straight gangster. Anyways, rest in peace. So I decide that if for no other reason I should get in contact with the homeboy. So I look at my little old red phone book. Anyone that was in Hawaii knows they give you a little paper red phone book. So I say, the wind was blowing. I started to look through my phone book and I see my homeboy's name and his number. Of course, I dial my heart, dial my heart. Right, I call my boy and uh, he answers. And he's like, what's happening? Now, he had been expecting me to get out the next week. They kick, gave me like a three or four day kick. I've talked about that before where they surprised me. They're like, you're getting out mañana. You're going aboard. You're gone, right? So he's not expecting me to be out. He expects me to be out that next Monday. 
but I'm out. What this right side scan? I'm on the prowl. So I'm like, what's happening, bro? And he's like, good load, you're out, right? I'm gonna come swoop you right now. So of course he comes in the Cutlass Supreme riding on Go Ones, him, his brother, and another homeboy from my body, monkey. So they come swoop me up. I'm like, hey, this is me, Pac Man. This is all I had, man, right? So they're like, don't trip. We're gonna take you to the little old bitty Merced Mall and lace you up. So they take me, buy me a little bit of ropa. You know, I get a couple shirts, a pack of white strap first on me. For those of you that know, now you know, a pair of Ben Davises from Miller's Outpost, Simon. We did it like that. And a pair of silver tabs. Vamanos a la verga. I'm ready now, right? Mongolian. Go to the dollar store and get me a rubber band. And that's it. That's all I need. You know, I'm prepared. I got a Northern Army's outfit. Let's go, right? Um, and of course, that's what I'm doing. So that night, of course, we go party. I've told the story before. We went to from Merced to Modesto. Actually, series went to the drive-in. So I was scared. We had an unprecedented evening that night. It was all good in the hood. That was the first time. So I was scared. The gun got it in. We just keep it like that. Um, I did my thing. Met a couple females. Everybody was living their best life. Um, and I was just happy to be among some loved ones, among some homeboys that were showing me uh, true canalismo, my real homeboys from my barrio. The embracement was real. Now, at the same time, I was on my gangbanging hype. I was on my gangbanging mentality. So, of course, with these camisas and with these tramals also came a little, <laughs> right? A little nine millimeter never hurt nobody. Okay, who gave it to me? That's uh, neither here nor there, and that doesn't matter. But I allegedly had it on me. Um, so, I'm mobbing. The mobilization was real. My gang banging was absolutely real. Um, so I started to uh, uh, kick it with a lot of the different homeboys. And of course, I would kick back at these little parties, these little get togethers. You know how it is. A whole bunch of homeboys stuck in a motherfucking garage telling war stories. Some people are tended to and some people are doing lineas of the coca. Oh my, right? I wasn't involved in nada, but telling my war stories and pushing it in a northern fashion. Of course, I used to say, we don't indulge in hard drugs. They're like, what? Right? And, and that was it. They were wide awake. They were hearing me. They were listening. Whatever the case may be, um, they were the homeboys and they were going to get that pass. So um, I decided if no other, for no other reason, I should go kick it with the homeboy one day. One of my homeboys that was from the north side of Merced. Now you have to understand at this particular time, we were at war with the north side of Merced. But I had just got out, bro, and this waffle um, had got out previously, probably about, say, about half a year prior to me. And we had did time together in Preston. So, of course, I got in that little itty-bitty red phone book, and I called him. I said, what's up, Canal? He's like, what's happening, bro? The love was there. See, we weren't playing that uh, that North Side Merced, West Side Merced shit. Oh, it was going down. And if I see one of his homeboys in the motherfucking, uh, in the wind, he was going to get smacked right there on Highway 99. But at the same time, it wasn't that serious. We were Norteños above all else. That's what we were supposed to do. That's what we were supposed to be. We were still living in prison, right? And we hadn't even been to prison yet. YA mentality. Um, so, of course, I get a hold of him. What are you doing today, bro? And he's like, hey, just chilling right here. I'm going to go meet some hinos over here at this fucking, um, the, this little uh, park. So, I'm like, swoop me up, bro. Shit. You know what I mean? So, I said, you know, I'm on patas right now. He's like, well, you're on Nikes, Charlie. I'm on patas. Well, I, bear, I don't even got Nikes. I'm on feet, so I mean, I still had the same old boots that I paroled in. Of course, I borrowed some little motherfucking Nikes from the homeboy. And I got to step in. The homeboy picked me up right there on the corner of fucking Childs and R Street in dead, in dead end. And it was all good. We wiggled to his side of town. Now, unbeknownst to me, I kind of knew, but I wasn't really up to par on what was going on as far as the smackalization. But I guess the north side of Merced was going at it real, real. It was getting funky on that side of town. It was getting real funky with the creepas. Okay, so prior to us kicking it this day, I guess the night before, some little youngsters had bought some creepas. I wasn't aware of this shit. I knew that we had our own beef as far as dead end with the Merced Gangster Crips on the west side. That was our thing. We were going to wiggle while we work. Uh -huh. We were going to do our shit. Uh, but at the same time, I wasn't aware of who their enemies were besides us. I didn't know that the North Side was actually wigging against the Africanos at that time. But that's what was happening. So I guess that shooting had happened the night before. And so there was Vatos on the hunt. To what degree of hunt they were on, I can't call it, man. But we're kicking back. We pull up on these two chicks. They're waiting for us at this park. Um, a very well-known park called Rahili Park in Merced um, on the North Side. And so we pull up to the park. So we're in the cuts. And there's a lot of benches, I remember, and a playground. And so the homeboy's like, watch out, the two tortas are right there. So let's get Arby time. I'm like, orderly subway, we're about to eat fresh. So we mob over there, and of course the chicks are like, what's happening, man? This is me, man. And I'm like, orderly, this is me too, bitch, right? And it was on a cracker, no disrespect to the women that are watching. That's the way I talked. I was full of myself, right? Uh, the charisma was real. So was the fucking, what do they call it? I'm just, I was full of myself, I was conceited, right? So we mob up to these chicks, and... Uh, and we're kicking back, you know what I mean? He's popping at one, I'm popping at the other. Man, once you pop, you can't stop, like lace. We're getting our issue on, and we're deciding where we're going to go from here. Because you can't get a mamon in the park, or can you? 
one never knows does one it's happened before it would happen again right um so we're chopping it up though but we're deciding we're gonna go back and chill at this chick's house she has her little pad and um just about the time we're getting ready to go man i was sitting on the table so it's a, one of those old concrete tables at a park and then you got concrete benches and the homeboy sitting down on the bench chopping it up with one chick he's all grabbing her like this as kid trying to get his fingers in one time this about this over there but give me that honey love he's on his r kelly ship battle not pissing on her head right doing his thing and i'm posted up talking to the other tortita and uh she's chopping game and i see her eyes get big she's facing to me i'm facing this way i'm on the bench trying to post up mongolian like this let's get bitch braided right i'm feeling myself and she's talking to me and i see her eyes get big just about the time I see her eyes get big, I feel a hard impact to my head. It felt like I got socked in the back of the head. But so scared. Oh, yeah, I got punched, right? But I didn't get punched with a fist. Um, so all I remember is seeing a bright light flash. Pass, right? Sass. New word of the day. Pass. Pass. That motherfucker went. And I slumped forward, I guess. Now, this is where the story goes from me knowing it to the homeboy telling it to me. Um, so he says I fell out. Of course, when I fall out, I had a little thing thing on me. The wind was blowing. That also tumbled out of my waistband, and the homeboy snatches it and proceeds to start dumpalization. The dumpalization was real, okay? He proceeds to start firing back, allegedly. And um, and one of these Africanos gets uh, uh, scratched. Let's just say it, it nicks them, right? There's a couple other Africanos in the car. They dip out. They leave their own homeboy. They're like, fuck that cut on 50. We're out of here. This shit ain't nifty. These northerners are busting back. So they jam, and I guess I'm done. Well, one of the chicks, she runs to a payphone. Yes, a payphone. This is 1996. You were lucky if you had one of those fucking Motorola uh, uh, cellular phones. You know, the ones from, uh, what was the shit popping at that time? Um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't it was T-Mobile or none of that, man. I forget what it was. It was like a cellular one or something, right? Anyway, she runs to a payphone, and she dials. So I need, we need help, help. A Norteño in distress. Let's get Houston. We have a Norteño down. And a creepa, Right? So they come, of course, the ambulance come. At this time, I'm out of it, okay? They think I'm gone. They think I'm dead. They're doing life-saving measures. Um, I've been hit in the back of the head with a 40 cap, okay? That's what it was. Or expense, a dispenser. I'm lying. I'm lying. See, I'm lying. It wasn't a 40. It was a 45, okay? So I got hit in the back of the head with a 45 at pretty close range. The average motherfucker would have died, okay? I'm not saying I'm more than average, right? I'm just saying the angle that he hit me in, what it did was is, is it exploded the back of my cranium. I got a hard ass head, I guess, right? So I was scared from all that wear and tear and YA and getting battery packed so much. My head developed callus, I guess. Whatever the case may be, I lived, right? Um, so of course they stretch me out and they pick up this creep and he's leaking too profusely. The homeboy had already got on down the road, right? Um, the hyenas, they start fucking spilling the beans. They start spilling the, 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 the whole tail. And they're telling the blackers exactly what in, what happened. I'm innocent, but I ain't did shit, right? Um, I'm a victim in this matter. You know what I mean? The victimization was real. Anyways, um, they take us both in an ambulance, separate ambulances to the same hospital. Now, at this time, there was a hospital in Merced called MCMC, which was located right by the juvenile hall on 1411 B Street. Um, it's no longer there. Now it's like a mental health facility. Vatos are there on some 5150 JCAT shit. But at the same time, right? This is where they used to take the west side shot victims, even though we were on the north side because Saskia, we weren't going to the good hospital, which was Mercy at that time. Fuck that. They were like, Charlie, homie, take these gang members to MCMC. You know what I mean? Let them die there. Um, so they take us there. Now, one of my homeboys from my neighborhood, his mother's a well-known nurse. Um, so she sees me come through. She starts to panic. She starts to call the homeboys. Hey, he's been hit. He's been hit. He's fallen and he can't get up. And by this time, the homeboys already tapped in with several people. Um, it ain't nothing but the next day... Um, when they knock at the homeboy's door, you know, surprise, guns and badges, blue suits and white guys. You know the story. Uh, he's living his life as a Northside soldier, literally, right? They come and swoop him up. Um, they got him under investigation for a shooting. The shooting being that he hit the Africano in the neck, right? Um, the Africano was, a. they did life-saving measures. He was okay. The homeboy did nick something, supposedly, allegedly, right? And they were able to sew a little bit of this and a little bit of that back up. And he was able to uh, proceed to the next light. Um, but I remember the cool part about it was, was about a week to a week and a half later, I wake up in this hospital and I remember my home, my homeboy's mom is my nurse and my homeboy's right there sitting down like, man, he stood strong with me, like 10 toes down, like, oh, I'm sorry, so sorry. I, they know I'm going to live. Um, I bypassed the point of critical condition. I'm now in fair condition. Um, they got me in a, in a fucking uh, room. I say a cell, right? They got me in a cell, but in the hospital. They got me in a room, but I'm handcuffed, right? I don't know why I'm handcuffed. And to what degree of handcuffalization they got me. They got me handcuffed. Um, she sees me. I come out of this uh, lightweight coma that I was in. I think they had induced a coma 
to kind of ease the swelling in my head and they were giving me certain medications. I got IVs hooked up to me. I'm fucked off, right? And I look at the home button. I'm so whopping, Holmes, right? What happened? He's like, Orale, you got shot. And I was like, what, right? And I'm like, hey, am I alive? He goes, man, I shit, you're talking, puto, right? And I, hey, and at that time, I remember two things went through my mind. One, they got me. I don't know how, but they got me, right? And, and I didn't know who got me. And two was, damn, bro, where's my gun, right? I was tripping. I was on my gangbang and shit like, damn, I didn't get a chance to bust back. I felt like riffraff, right? Because I didn't handle my shit back. But so it's good. The retaliation was going to be real, allegedly, right? Um, and they got this curtain. They got this curtain. Now, you got to understand, this was a whole poop, but low-budget-ass hospital on the west side of Merced. Ghetto as fuck. Cucarachas y todo my um, tortas walking by, homies. Uh, Pretty-ass face, pero big old nalgona. And I'm sitting there just posted up, and I'm feeling good. You know, I'm all fucking medicated back on methadone or whatever they got me on. So I'm feeling real good, right? Now, at the same time, the homeboy's giving me the rundown of what exactly happened, and I'm telling them what I remember. It's starting to come back in flashes, you know? That's how it is. Um, well, I guess the hind here told me that the homeboy's locked up, the hind is told and everything. Um, so it's all good, right? Next thing you know, detectives burst in the door. Everybody down! We need to talk to this guy, right? So they come up to me. They're like, what happened? I don't know. I was shot, right? Who are you shot by? I can't call it like an alcoholic, right? How do you know you were shot? Because the homeboy just told me, man. But, you know, to what degree of shotization I got, I don't know. So you've been shot many times? No, I got shot right there, and then they shot Thorazine into my arm. I don't know what the fuck happened, man. I ain't telling you about those nothing. Get the fuck on down the road, put those right? At the same time, I'm maintaining my innocence. Well, we're not uh, we're not charging you with anything. Well, that's even better, right? See you later. Did you see your homeboy shoot? Who? What homeboy? I don't have homeboys. I mean, I'm not, I don't gangbang, right? Um, so I'm playing the utilizing the dummy role. I'm playing the dumb role. They're like, okay, yeah, we know. We're gonna get on down the road. See you later, alligator. They unhandcuff me, take their cuffs off. I'm like, why am I being? Why am I handcuffed if I'm not charged? You know, oh, it's for your own safety and security. For what? But the so fucking putos could come in here and try to kill me, and I can't go nowhere. Come on, stop it. You know, I'm not that dumb. I'm, I, I was born in the daytime, but not yesterday. Or was I? Anyway, so they leave. Um, so I'm shot, right? I'm shot. Well, there's a there's a, um, a curtain. And so after my homeboy leaves, he's like, you're good on me. I'll let the, the brothers know you're good. And uh, you'll be you'll be discharged out of here pretty soon. Probably like another week. That's what his head father was telling him. I was like, it's all good, bro. You know what I mean? I was feeling myself because he's like, damn, fool, you took one to the dome like motherfucking Tupac. What this ain't get Watch out, right? And I was like, and I'm feeling myself like, all right, I'm all pumped up. Like, get my Mongolian all fucked up. He goes, it's a little crooked, pero it'll live, right? It'll live better. It looks better than you do, right? So everything was good. Um, and I remember there's a curtain. I could hear someone on the other side snoring like a motherfucker loud, too. I'm like, damn, man, I'm not trying to be sold up no, with no one. I done got out. Um, and I moved the curtain back. And it's the Africano. And he has a big old bandage right here. And he's up. He wakes up when, he, when I pull the curtain. He's kind of like. And we get to chopping it up. I'm like, what happened, bro? You know, what's, ha what's happening? I'm trying to get up. Like, says, okay, I'm about to rip this IV out and stick it in your neck. But on the other side. And uh, it was a misidentification. He was like, yeah, man, we were mad. Some motherfuckers shot up the homeboys. Um, so we was trying to headhunt, bro. But we was looking for specific targets. And we seen you wearing red, a Mongolian, bro. And I was on you, you know? Um, so it necessarily wasn't the wrong target. Now, he intended to hit the person that hit his homeboy, I guess. But at the same time, um, you know, I just happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong. It happens. It happens. But yes, I did get shot in the head. So a lot of people ask me nowadays. OK, let's fast forward. Um, me and that fucking Africano, we ended up telling war stories, laughing. It was cool. I let bygones be bygones. I told him if I ever seen him in the calle, it was fair game, fair use act. No copyright intended. I was going to handle my business. And he said it was it was what it was. But as far as us having a conversation, I was like, damn, I'm talking to the motherfucker that tried to kill me. And it was all good. We were both some victims in that motherfucker. His neck was hurting. My head was aching, right? Or did it? Advil didn't work. Anyways, I'm posted up. Um, I get out and everything was everything. Um, now, people ask me, let's fast forward to 2022. I'm always being asked the question, gun, why do you always wear hats? Two reasons. Yes, the wind's blowing. Two reasons. One, I'm going bald like a motherfucker because I'm old. But my hairline is back this way, right? And the second reason is I've always been self-conscious of the back of my head because I got domed in the back of my head. So I have um, a lot, I guess it ripped my skull up. So I got a lot of scar tissue, a lot of scarring in the back of my head from being shot. So yes, that is why I wear the hat. So for those of you that want to know, Simon, that's why I wear the hat all the time. It's not because of fucking I'm scared because I'm going bald. No, that's part of it, right? The, the number one reason though, first and foremost, is because I got shot and I'm very self-conscious about my head. You know, I'm tired of people looking at me like, damn, what happened to him? I got shot, motherfucker. That's what happened. You know, when you're out there gang bangalization on the streets, doing it in a real way, even though I was just kicking back trying to pop out a hyena and get a mamon. Either way, when you're out there living that lifestyle and portraying that image as I was, red shirt, 
red fucking uh, shoes, red shoelaces, you know what I mean? And a Mongolian that was with me, man, it was whipping. But this, I, get, I was on my tongue post shit like this. It was going <laughs> helicopter shit. Um, then that happened. Anyways, with that being said, yes, um, I did get shot in the head. That was in uh, late 96. And it happened in the city of Merced, man. And you know what happens when you're gangbanging? What do you expect? Was it the first time or the last time I was going to be hit? Been stabbed several times. We'll talk about that in a different spill. But I just wanted to put it out there the day that I took one to the head. Because, yes, I'm still right here. I took one to the head. How I survived? I don't know, man. How to survive a South Central? You know what I mean? I'm not even from South Central, but I did it. Or the ice cube. I survived. Anyways, with that being said, man, I hope that you move fast with a purpose. I hope that you take this story, man, and apply it to your everyday life, man. And know that you're, the way you portray yourself out there, the way you act, the way you look at people, and just the way you dress, man, can get you caught up in a sticky situation. Go out there and function for your familia. They need you first and foremost. If you see your raza, pick them, pick them up, man, and help them to try. You know, Help them to make that effort to do something. Even if they don't want to make that effort, um, help them. That's what it is, man. If you like this, please hit that like and subscribe. There's a little button right there. It's a fucking bell. Hit that for the notification. If not, you can hit that thumbs down. I'm still going to do my thing. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. This is the gun. Gunners Collective. Go check out the profiles. I'm dropping a banger next. Bang, bang. The gun.